Welcome back guys to another roundtable. My name is Adam. With me once again, I have Victor. Hi everyone. And we have uh, Wei Chin back again Hi, from everyone. SGX. Alright, so Wei Chin is the ETF product manager at SGX. Uh, just a quick introduction again for those who don't know you. Tell us what you do at SGX. So I'm an ETF product manager as you have introduced earlier on. Yep. Uh, my main role is to uh, look after the product lifecycle of all ETF listed on SGX. Mm -hmm. And through uh, this journey, I'm also working with industry participants, mm -hmm. leaders like yourself, uh, to increase the awareness of ETF investing. All right. So we've had you here before on a previous roundtable. And in that roundtable, we basically were talking in general about uh, yep. ETFs listed in the SGX, right? Correct. On the SGX. Uh, so there were like bonds, uh, REITs, uh, REIT, equities. equities, and gold as well. Yep. So we talked a bit more about REIT, REITs at the last time. But for this uh, particular roundtable, we want to talk about bond ETFs, yes. which I think is pretty interesting because I'm interested yeah. in this myself. I mean, bonds right now are pretty uh, kind of like hot topic because of interest rates going up. You know, we've talked about uh, Singapore Savings Bonds, uh, SGS uh, Bonds as well, which is the bonds offered by the government. So there's a lot of interest in bonds right now. Uh, when most of the time it's for us we've been talking about stocks equities, most, yep. equities most of the time as well so we're going to talk about bond ETFs which I think is a great uh, topic to explore yep. because not many people may know about it so I think let's start with the basics alright so what's the difference between a bond and a bond ETF yeah I think before we go into that right uh, just recap a bit what are ETFs okay. because end of the day bonds ETFs are ETFs which are investment funds mm -hmm. listed traded on the exchange they typically track the performance of an index and gives investors access to the range of markets and asset classes mm -hmm. in this case one of the asset class as we are discussing today is bonds yep so what differences does a bond and a bond ETF has then? Bond ETFs, investment funds, it made out of many, many bonds okay. in the underlying. It could have over hundreds of uh, issuers, i.e. companies that are, are issuing these bonds. Whereas a single bond, of course, you are subjected to a single issuer. Mm -hmm. In this case, the risk uh, that involved for a single bond issuers is higher mm -hmm. due to its concentration risk. Okay. Whereas a bond ETF itself gives you a more diversified portfolio because it has a, it's a credit risk of issuers spread across all the holdings. Yep. So if you are looking at uh, corporate bonds yep. Yep. issuance, which uh, you can get it from some of the local brokers, okay. um, you do need to bear in mind the concentration you're putting up front because let's say a, a minimum investment of 250,000. Mm -hmm. is, is that normal? Every uh, like corporate bond has to be 250,000? I believe it's, it's pretty normal okay. in terms so it's of the bond bit. term. And, yeah. and is, uh, it also means that uh, it's only available to most of the accredited investors. Yeah. So uh, the typical man on the street, unlikely, they, okay. they will have access or rather they, they, might not even to want to, want to, they might not even want to have access in this, right? Because yeah. of the risk they're undertaking. Uh, if they only have an investment amount of 250000 mm -hmm. would they put everything into a single company yeah, bond? I mean, even, even if I had a million dollars, I'm going to put a quarter of my you know, investable funds in just one corporate bond. doesn't make sense. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and assuming you, if you do have a million dollars and you want to allocate 25% into the bond market, yeah. right, that's where ETFs, bond ETFs come handy because uh, by trading or buying into a bond ETF, you are instantly diversifying over hundreds of issuers. Yep with yeah. a different varying uh, level of uh, credit risk mm -hmm. that each of them may have. Okay. I think when it comes to buy a single bond, uh, corporate bonds, it's, it's the same as when you, you have to be like equities, you have to really do your research and all this. If you buy into a ETF, it's really, you really literally diversify all your risk, right? Uh, yeah. 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 I, I would say you are not, uh, in a way, you don't have to, unlikely you will be doing a individual company analysis for okay. the 300 or 100 over issuers. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what's likely you still need to do is of course, do your duty, due mm -hmm. diligence on the individual uh, bond ETFs. Mm -hmm. What do they really cover? Which markets are they having access to? And what are the uh, credit rating profile Right, because even for bond ETFs, it differs. It doesn't mean that you are 100% protected as mm -hmm. long as it's a bond ETF. Bond ETFs still have certain risks involved, including the markets they are giving you access into. Uh, uh, which are the issuers? Are these the markets that you want to gain access to? Mm -hmm. Or are you looking at a single market access, like a pure Singapore bonds uh, market access? So we do have a couple of uh, different ones uh, listed on SGX mm -hmm. uh, that offers investors access beyond Singapore as well. In fact, one of the largest bond ETF that's listed on SGX is the one that tracks the FTSE Chinese government bond 
index. Mm -hmm. And that allow investors, uh, without the need to operate an onshore custodian account or onshore bond uh, holdings account, um, to have access to China government bonds, which oh. are denominated in RMB. Okay. And you can see this itself, uh, even though it's a single country uh, allocation, it does bring about allo asset allocation diversification uh, benefits to investors. Wow, that's interesting. So the largest bond on the SGX is a Chinese government bond ETF. One of the largest. One in of fact, the largest. the largest one is one that invests into the Asia high yield bond markets. Okay. Uh, that allows investors to have instant diversity diversification across uh, 300 over issuers okay. uh, in, in terms of their credit performance. So that product itself, uh, in fact, has uh, grown uh, strongly over the last uh, few years, largely because of the uh, market volatility mm. over the China property uh, companies. All right. So again, not a recommendation to buy or sell any of the things that we're going to mention during this presentation, strictly for educational purposes only uh, but from what I hear is that yeah bond ETFs are a great way to diversify yep uh, if you want exposure into fixed income because like um, like you said I mean we you know SSBs and I mean Singapore savings bonds and, and SGS bonds they're very low minimum entries but when it comes to like pure corporate bonds quarter million dollars I'm not going to put money into that unless yeah. I like, have a lot of money that I just want to. And like you said, there's concentration risk. What if the company defaults? Like, but if you want bond exposure, e bond ETFs are a great way to basically get exposure into that. And there's so many different ways. And like you said, there's a still some macro level analysis you need to do. You can't just like kind of like jump in and just buy, right? You yep. just do all these like the stuff that you just said. Um, but you know, I think one of the main questions is when it comes to bonds, a lot of uh, investors uh, kind of like invest in it because they just want to get the fixed income, uh, you know, hence the name, right? So they get in the coupon and then they get back par at the end of maturity. But when it comes to bond ETFs, it's not like that, right? It, it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah, when it comes to bond ETFs, uh, the main difference, in fact, between a bond ETFs and a uh, uh, single bond, be mm. it a uh, Singapore government bonds okay. or corporate bonds um, bonds does have an expiry date yep. most of the bonds does have a maturity date, maturity date. Yep. Uh, bond ETF uh, most of them don't mm -hmm. they do have an average maturity they okay. do have an average duration which are for those who are uh, more savvy in the bond investing you do know that duration is one of the key uh, parameters you should be looking at yep. because duration mm -hmm. affects how how your bond will perform when there's any changes to the, the interest rates. Mm -hmm. So given that the bond ETFs uh, do have uh, typically a range of duration or maturity that the issuer try to track, mm -hmm. it also means that as the years goes by, um, your, your bond ETF does not mature and does not give you back the full principle that mm -hmm. you have invested, mm -hmm. uh, like what bond does. All right, so I mean, for a bond, if maturity, you get back par, but for a bond ETF, you got to buy it at whatever mm. the NAV is, right? Yep. Correct. And then you can choose to sell anytime you want. Yep. Right? I mean, on the, on the market, right? It's an ETF. So for bond ETFs, uh, typically you'll buy from the exchange, yep. right? And there's always a bid and offer spreads, which you can use to uh, execute your buy or sell trades mm -hmm. back to back to the market. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so single bond rather, uh, normally you can either buy it uh, uh, at this listing as okay. its issuance mm -hmm. or you may be able to buy it from your brokers at the secondary market okay. um, and, and that behaves differently from a, a bond ETFs. Okay. So what is the secondary market like for bonds here? Is it is it um, liquid or how is it like for bonds? I think it depends um, but then I will have to depends on the bonds that okay. you're looking at but I would say uh, bond ETF generally are more liquid okay. because mm -hmm. we do have uh, designated market makers mm -hmm. uh, for bond ETFs on the exchange which means that these uh, market participants are obliged to do two ways okay. continuous quoting uh, for, for, for throughout the trading days okay. and that allows investors at any point of time if they wish to increase their bond exposure to buy from the market and at any times to reduce their bond, uh, bond uh, exposure to sell to the market. All right, so yeah. let's just say I'm a retail investor uh, and let's just say I can afford a single corporate bond, 250,000, mm -hmm. no problem, makes sense for me allocation wise and everything. But how would a person actually choose between deciding on a bond uh, and versus a bond ETF? I mean. Like you said, there's diversification on one hand. On the other hand, with bonds, you get back your par at the end of it, but there's no expiry for bond ETFs. So basically, for bond ETFs, um, when you choose to sell, 
really depends on interest rates at that point mm-hmm. in time because if it's interest rates are up you're gonna lose money on yep. your, I mean that's you, the price is gonna come down and vice versa as well whereas for bonds yes if you're gonna sell before maturity you have that price volatility uh, vol- price volatility as well but when it comes to maturity you just get back par so how do you make a decision whether what makes more sense for you as an investor as an individual whether you should go for a bond or a bond ETF yeah, I think the last episode, one of the areas that we, we spoke about is uh, how should investors uh, decide which ETF to buy. Okay. And I think that same logic applies to bond and bond ETFs, mm-hmm. right? You got to look at your portfolio. What is the purpose of investing? Mm-hmm. Is it to build your retirement uh, portfolio or is it because you have funds that are idle for probably going to be idle for next six months, next two years, next five years, and you're looking for somewhere to generate some income while uh, try to to mm. keep the principle uh, intact okay. right so if your purpose is the former which is to build a well diversified retirement portfolio that mm. is going to uh, they have another 30 years to build okay. right i think bond mm. ets allow you to uh, fit in the missing piece mm-hmm. if a uh, fixed income or bonds are something that you don't yet have in your portfolio or mm-hmm. well, like what i mentioned earlier on if you think that uh, china bond market is going to do well over time um, but you really don't know, um, or rather you really don't have the access to China bond market directly. Mm. China bond ETFs allow you to make sure that in your retirement portfolio, there's always a small section that covers China bond okay. just in the event in the event where it does well. So so the, the other part to it is um, single bond, right? So single bond, they always have a fixed tenor. Mm-hmm. Even if you look at the... Uh, uh, the T-bills yep. that uh, you have introduced in earlier previous sessions, um, they do have a fixed tenor, six months. Mm-hmm. So for someone who is perhaps looking for funds, right, he needs to pay up for renovations okay. in six months' time, mm-hmm. probably from now till um, um, March, right? It's going to be idle. And he wants to look for interest-bearing instruments. Mm-hmm. So T-bill fits that, that role because okay. in six months' time, you know how much you need okay. and you have the money sitting with you today. All right. So I guess it makes sense. So what you're saying is if you have a fixed time horizon and you're saying, I want this money at the end of that five years or whatever it is, I want that money back. You're going to put in a most most likely a single bond because then your maturity is guaranteed and you get back par. I'm assuming that the whole operation doesn't default, right? <laughs> yeah. So, But if you have a, a more long-term horizon, mm-hmm. uh, maybe 30 years or I don't know how long in mm-hmm. the future, but you want exposure to the bond market, Mm-hmm. maybe in China like you said in Singapore wherever mm-hmm. it is uh, uh, you just kind of like a bond ETF is an easy way to basically get exposure to that rather yep. than kind of kind of like always buying a bond getting back yep. maturity and then looking for another bond to buy whereas if an ETF it kind of like just rolls all the way right it does it, it just does, keeps rolling because yeah. the bond manager is the one kind of like yeah, doing all the this, job for doing you. the job. In fact, you. although the bond ETF doesn't expire, yep. the underlying bond almost certainly does, yep. right? Yep. So what are they going to do when the bond does mature? They are going to help you because they are your fund manager. They are mm-hmm. going to help you to uh, look for the next bond okay. based on the index that they're tracking. Mm-hmm. Because their role is again to track the index performance. Based on the index they're tracking, they'll look for the next bond to reinvest the money into. And you don't have to. You don't have to be the one doing it. The fund manager will be the one doing it. Okay. Yeah. So I think the, my takeaway hearing from what you just shared is that if you have a fixed horizon and you have a particular plan for that money in five years time, three years time, go with something that has maturity, yep. you get back par, that's your guarantee. If that's what you're looking for, you can go with that. But if not, and you want diversification and you, have, you want exposure and allocation in your portfolio mm-hmm. to the bond market, yep. an ETF is just a more flexible way to just get exposure. More flexible and also like if you look at the uh, Singapore corporate bond ETF yeah. listed on SGX, it has a lot more issuers um, for you for you to uh, diversify your risk across, right. right? So I think going back to the first point which we have started, I think diversification mm-hmm. is really one of the key reasons why investors would be looking at a bond ETFs okay. uh, compared to a single bond uh, investing. And and even even for that one, I think we have spoken earlier, earlier about the uh, the advantage of having a fixed tenor mm-hmm. to your bond right you know when do you want to uh, if you know when you need the money back mm-hmm. probably a single bond especially the government securities yeah. uh, are good for that purpose uh, but also for investors who feel more secure I would say if they really really want to have uh, the principal protected at certain point of their, of their lives uh, they are not sure when uh, but they do want to see uh, full protection mm-hmm. um 
probably a, a, a single bond mm-hmm. uh, is still makes sense. Okay. However, it also depends on the issuer. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, government bonds, especially in Singapore context, uh, government issued bonds, uh, typically the default risk is lower than a company bond. Yeah, I mean that's. Bond. I mean, if that happens, I'll be worried about the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that should never happen. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think the main I concern for me, if I was looking for you know single bond, is basically the concentration risk, whether this company is not going to default. I mean, yep. it's almost it's the same. Like Victor has mentioned many times before, is like. It, Sometimes why do you why do you invest in bonds? You got to do mm-hmm. this as, uh, same, the same amount of, work, same amount of yeah, work analyzing yeah. the whole company, yeah. making sure they're financially strong yeah. and everything, and then I mean, you buy the bond. Yeah, right? if you don't do that, just invest in the bond ETF. <laughs> you save all your trouble. It's the same as if yeah. like doing research for a yeah, stock, correct. right? Because yeah. you have to understand the company as well. So that's for corporate bonds. Uh, mm-hmm. There's actually quite a bit of work uh, yeah. involved as well. But the yeah. the difference is, of course, some people just want the fixed income, yeah. the predictability and the yeah. return versus the equities as well. Uh, so. I think there's a difference here. But I think this is pretty uh, insightful for me to, to mm-hmm. hear the difference between single bonds and bond ETFs because mm-hmm. I think um, for maybe most laymen, they just think that, oh, bond ETFs are just a way to diversify. But there are actually different things to consider, like there's no maturity, there's price mm-hmm. volatility when you want to sell compared to maturity for single bonds and stuff like that. And it all depends on what your goal is in life. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you want to have a renovation, you want to buy a house, and you need that money you need to kind of like plan for that and yep. maybe the bond ETF will put a bit of risk into that because you don't know what the interest is going to be like yep. at the time you're going to sell. All right. So these are things I hope, you know, if you're looking into fixed income for yourself in your portfolio, uh, this will be very, very, very helpful for you. Mm. All right. So, yep. I mean, um, if people are interested in bonds uh, or bond ETFs, basic, uh, specifically actually, uh, they can go to the SGX uh, screener, yep. right? Yep. Which you mentioned before in our previous roundtable as well. So uh, there's, uh, they can find all the bond ETFs over there as well? It's available there and uh, you also have fact sheets okay. from the issuers. It's all downloadable uh, from the screener page. Right. In fact, I do encourage investors to take a closer look into the product disclosure, mm-hmm. uh, the highlights uh, that is uh, offered by the issuers to okay. have a better understanding on the underlying baskets okay. that they are buying into um, the uh, and any form of risk that they should be informed uh, before making their decisions all right so yep. I'm gonna ask you this question here before we end uh, you said take a look at the product uh, sheet right yep what do you look out for when you look at the product sheet? what what jumps out at for you I would say um, cost okay it's always important you yeah. need to know how much you're paying for the funds that you're buying into okay uh, and and one thing i think most investors will ask is why am i paying um expense ratio of let's say 50 30 basis point okay i think it, it, it depends on the the type of uh, um work needs to be done mm-hmm. um there is certainly works to be done by the uh, issuer issuer mm-hmm. um in terms of um giving you the market access Mm -hmm. in terms of uh, doing all the uh, managing the uh, cash flows of dividends and corporations for the particular products. Mm -hmm. Uh, But beyond cost, you also need to look at the track record. Mm -hmm. Uh, How well are the funds or rather the ETF tracking the index? Mm -hmm. Because that is really the key purpose uh, of uh, index tracking ETFs. You need to uh, need you need to entrust your your monies to issuers who are able to help you to achieve the uh, investment objective here, which is to uh, track the uh, index. All right. So yep. I think uh, these are things that you need to look out for. Don't just blindly jump into any investment. All right. So again, no recommendation to buy or sell anything that we mentioned during this presentation. Everything strictly for educational purposes, but it's been very educational. Thank you so much. I think that's been really, really helpful, especially if you're looking into bond ETFs. So once again, my name is Adam. That is Victor. Thank you. This is Weichin. Thanks, Adam. All the way from SGX. He's the ETF product manager at the SGX. It's been wonderful having you, you know, sharing your knowledge about bond ETFs, which is something that we have learned ourselves as well. So thank you so much for having, uh, for being here, you know. Yeah. So again, if you have any questions about bonds, bond ETFs, put them in the comment section. If you like this roundtable, uh, you know, hit the like button. And of course, subscribe to our channel. Many more roundtables coming up. And of course, if you're interested in finding out the bonds that we have on the SGX, just go to the uh, stock screener as well. You can find out everything uh, over there as well. So once again, thank you for watching and we'll see you around again.